We're going to look at a few more of the primitives that we can make with 3ds Max. So I'm just going to come over to my Scene Explorer and hit Select All. Then I can just hit Delete. So I want to go back to my Create and Standard Primitives menu here to look at a few more of these types of objects. So we saw a box. Let's take a look at a sphere. It's just a simple click and drag. A cone is going to be multiple clicks. So the first click and drag is radius one. The second drag, I'm not holding down a button now, is just defining the height. Then the final drag, either up or down, defines the second radius. So if we drag all the way down and get radius two to zero, then we actually have a cone. A cylinder, we're gonna click and drag to define the radius first. Then we're just going to drag to define the height. A tube. We have the first drag is the outer radius or radius one. Second drag is the inner radius or radius two. And then the final drag is then a click to define the height. And all of these things, since they are parametric objects, they all have parameters or values here that we can use to adjust them, but we don't know exactly how big we're gonna end up making it. Well, we can just drag it in and then set the numbers later. So I can fine tune this. Maybe I really only wanted it 65 on the height. Second radius 10, outer radius 20. I can always come back and adjust the parameters. So parametric objects are really nice that way. I can use the spinners, just drag up and down, or I can type in a number. Now, since I know the radius of this is 10, and we set the inner radius of this to 10, now I know that this object would fit perfectly if I use the align tool in the center. So if we go center, center, and hit OK. Now if I adjust the height of this, you see it'll basically stick out perfectly out of the center of that object. So using the parameters for parametric objects can definitely make it a lot easier to make sure that your objects are going to fit together and work together. Other types of primitives, we look at our extended primitives. We have additional geometry, like a chamfered box. So it's basically the same as a box, but after we define the length, width, and height, we drag to define the fillet size. So if we adjust that fillet, we have something a lot more like a die, or if we even make that a whole lot smaller, more like a cardboard box that doesn't have perfectly square corners, but we can round off and soften that up as much as we want. We have other things like a capsule. So I can define basically the radius and then kind of how far the ends are apart. Again, I can always come back and adjust. The oil tank is pretty cool. It's a lot like the capsule. Different kind of end on it though. Hedges are always cool. Seems like such a simple object, but as soon as I start changing around the family and the P and Q parameters, you get some pretty bizarre shapes. Within all of our basic primitives here, both the standard and extended primitives, you're going to have to play around with them a bit to start to get a feel for exactly what it takes to make the object. Some of them are a single click and drag. Teapot and a sphere, both single click and drag. There's only one parameter that really defines its size. The other parameter segments defines its quality. So the more segments, the more geometry. Some of them, like a torus, take a couple clicks. So my first click and drag is the first radius, and then the second radius. Again, all that can still be adjusted, but different objects require kind of a different click and drag system for each object. So experiment, play around.